Hello my friends and welcome to the first Saturday of Hallowfest. Can I, no exaggeration, tell you, it is packed. Packed, 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 packed. Let's head on in and see what it's like. Trying something a little bit different here because today I was with my family. And yes, it was very crowded. The parking lot was very full. And the main drags there by the fountain and going off to the left and the right were very packed. So it was very hard to get around with a group that I was in, about 10-ish people or so. It was tough to keep track of everybody, I must say. Now, right now, I entered through the pumpkin patch lane, which is just that little drag that goes between the area in front of the Joker all the way up to that area by the carousel. And that's where you'll find the entrance to one of the first kitty slash family attractions that's available for Hallowfest, which is the uh, maze that they have right here. Now, unfortunately, there are no characters this year that are set up or dressed up in their Halloween costumes. If you've seen my vlogs from last year, you'll know that they had a trick-or-treat trail, which was set up in such a way where you got candy, but in addition to that, you met at least two costumed Looney Tunes characters, which was really fun. This year, we have somebody dressed up as a witch, and my mother kind of insisted on going to take a photo with her. Uh, none of the kids were really up for it, which was pretty funny, but oh well, I followed her along. Even though there is a sign that says um, kids, tw you need a child 12 years or younger, uh, they, they have that right at the entrance to the witch and not at the entrance to the maze for some reason. But what can I say? Uh, it was, it's a nice little maze for the kids. I think it's, you know, you, you're in and out in like less than 10 minutes, so. It's not a bad addition to, to have here. Next up is, I guess, the, the bigger attraction for the kids is the trick-or-treat trail that they've set up in front of uh, Houdini's Great Escape. And this is making use of the queue because at the moment, the ride is not operating, I'm guessing, due to the fact that you can't social distance. And then this guy was, uh, uh, the security guard there was great. He had a great kind of like vibe to him. He was complimenting all the kids' masks and just really kind of staying positive there. I know it's kind of weird, you know, everybody's wearing masks and blah, 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 but hey, there's candy here, the kids are excited, and they, they utilize the space with the queue pretty well. I would say it was pretty well decorated, and in addition to that, there were some of these uh, inflatable types of decorations kind of peppered throughout the place, lots of pumpkins and some standees. Uh, there was one employee that was dressed up and kind of waving and saying hi, which was nice. And then in addition to that, there were the costume employees giving out the candy. I feel like this would have been a good opportunity to introduce Looney Tunes characters, and maybe that's just my bias, but I would have really enjoyed to see them because we haven't seen any of them this entire year. And I'm guessing we're not going to see them for Holiday in the Park either. So there's the whole crew there that I was with. Uh, most of the other adults were outside of the queue and we're gonna come up on the uh where where they're handing out the candy initially uh it's just the one like little bag and they're handing out your typical fun-sized stuff i do remember that a lot of the employees were saying happy hallow fest rather than happy halloween which i don't know it's kind of cool i think to have something else because it isn't technically halloween i don't know but just having something that has the, uh, the event's name in it, um, there was a certain energy that they gave off with that. Like, it was just nice. And then, as we're making our exit here, we started heading over to Bugs Bunny National Park, which has the last little kind of kids slash family area. They've renamed this area Cornstalk National Park, and I was kind of expecting, like, a photo opportunity that was like a little more obvious and perhaps I missed it I I don't know but everybody was excited to go check out all the the rides that uh, the little ones could get on because most of them are at that age where their heights are just about ready to get on the big roller coasters or they just barely can get on them so it's a weird transition period there so I did not notice a photo opportunity I just noticed that they had put these corn stalks all around and decorated the area. It was a nice touch, and I, I like that. I do wish that they had uh, 
had maybe put like a socially distant meet and greet in that stage where I remember they do the stage show and they have done meet and greets, I think, with Mrs. Claus at one point. <laughs> but it would have, I've seen it at Cedar Fair parks where they've done a Peanuts character that's socially distanced, maybe behind a rope. So it could have been something as a bonus there to add on, to have the characters on the stage. But maybe it's difficult to kind of do crowd control for that since kids can be so unpredictable. But that's going to about do it for this whole uh, kids area and the attractions available for Halifest. And we're going to move on to the next thing. So that's about all the offerings that they have for the kids and the families. That stuff does end at 6 p.m. I missed the, the trick or treat trail that they had last year because it did have the Looney Tunes characters in their costumes and that was really awesome. But it's nice to see, just like the scare zones and all that, nice to see that they found a way to include something for all the kids. Now, in addition to that, this opening weekend of Hallowfest is also National Cheeseburger Weekend, which I didn't know was even a thing. But they're selling this concoction called the Cheese Force, which is a bacon cheeseburger with mac and cheese on it. And I'm over here at the Garden State Grill to check that out. Let's unveil this thing real quick here. They only do mobile order now over at Garden State Grill, which I think you all remember I had trouble with. I have a feeling this is going to be very messy. Whoa. Yeah, this is gonna be really messy, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna dig in here and uh, enjoy, and I'll get back to you in a moment. Cheese force, man. Ooh, I have a feeling that I'm gonna be a little sluggish after this. I had to pause before even taking a bite because I pulled this thing out and just look at how much bacon I'm dealing with here. That's not a complaint. I'm, I'm just impressed, to be honest. So I just finished up with that burger and put a small dent in the tots. It was heavy, but I actually liked it. it <laughs> the mac and bacon kind of hid the, uh, the flavor or lack of flavor of your typical, um, yeah, the typical like patty that they use for these burgers at these amusement parks aren't the greatest tasting. So having the mac and the bacon kind of covered that up and it was just texture, which the texture is usually pretty nice. Uh, I think for what it was, I'm impressed. And I was also really curious and I looked up on the app, how many calories was this thing? How much do you think it was? Was it 800? 1,000? 1,200? 1,400. That burger, and maybe I guess including the tater tots, was 1,400 calories. Insane. That was my entire day right there. Like, almost my entire day right there. I'm gonna have to walk a little bit more today to make up for that. Thankfully, I'm about three miles deep. But anyway, the National Cheeseburger Weekend. Happy to celebrate it. Hope you guys celebrated it too. One thing I did forget to mention is that in addition to the cheeseburgers that they were offering for Cheeseburger Weekend, there's an exclusive ride time. And it's for a Joker, Harley Quinn, and one other ride that I'm not thinking of, but they had a booth set up and you go and you, there's some voucher online. There's a whole bunch of stuff that if you weren't looking for it or checking your emails diligently or anything like that, you weren't gonna find it. But they were handing out a wristband and from nine to 10 Sunday night, they're doing a little, uh, little exclusive ride time. So. There's stuff like that going on that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, but it's cool that they do it. I just hope that sometime in the future they get better at communicating that stuff. Anyway, I really had a lot of fun checking out all the stuff for the kids. That cheeseburger, I'm going to be walking that off for quite some time. But for now, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye. Seriously, some people have washboard abs. I have washboard ribs. So what did you do when you were alive? I was a sheriff of a one-horse town. Yeah, what happened? And I got trampled by a horse. Whose horse was it? It was mine. <clears throat> anyway, what about you? Well, I was apprenticing to be an executioner. What happened? I couldn't get the hang of it. Listen up, you two boneheads. These jokes are terrible. Oh, why don't you just move along? <laughs> I can't. I'm nailed up here. Don't you mean staked? <laughs> mm. Do you actually write these jokes down? I got them saved on my cattle drive. You know that steer's got a point. Most of them have too. Some of these jokes make me so sick, I wish I could make it to the ad house. Why can't you get to the ad house? Because I'm screwed to this chair. You're screwed. Think about the audience. Good night, everybody.